Alright, let's do this thing. Come on! Castles do I own? It's ridiculous. I'm gonna have my special effects guy's ass on a platter. Hello there. I don't even have OBS turned on on my other PC here. Now we're good. 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 What's up, Genesis Rebel? Let's see, we got we got a half hour to kill. I know what I can do. Maybe. Yeah, I'm gonna go grab my controller. Alright, I'll be right back. Currently trying to get a breed for a shiny Riolu and Pokemon Sword. Is that a new Pokemon or is that just a Pokemon I'm not aware of? Hang on a second, guys. See that there? Let's let's check everything out. Hmm. Let's just see that a little bit. Hmm. See if I can adjust just the tone of the other so slightly. Well, no, I'm a bit Okay, that doesn't look so bad. I can deal with that. I think. It evolves into Lucario. Interesting. Hey, what's up, Ghost Tom? 
a little spot over there. I'm not exactly sure what that is. Let me see something. We're still good here. Now we're good. Now we're good. We're golden. I, Can I just say, like, I did not, like, prepare, like, a playlist at all. Like, this is just my Spotify, like, honing in on the Smash Brothers album. And it's just playing ones at random. A little bit weird that it's all been like Castlevania stuff, right? I haven't touched the thing. I have not even touched the thing. The only thing I've done is stopped and started the play. It's weird. I'm hoping either Ori and the Will or Wisp or anything involving Rare. Do you really consider Rare to be an indie studio? Because I kind of don't. If we were getting anything from like Rare, like a Rare game on... Nintendo, I feel like that would be during a regular direct. I'm guessing there'll be some kind of St. Patrick's Day, I don't know, game or something. Probably not though. Now, honestly, what I'm what I'm actually hoping for is I'm hoping for Divinity: Original Sin, the first one, the enhanced edition on the Switch. I'm hoping for um, a like Cuphead DLC exclusive to the Switch involving Mario in some way, um, you know, because it was uh, Mario Day recently. So I kind of, I kind of think of like that. Yeah, Ori, the Ori sequel would be cool on the Switch. Um, is a Hat in Time already on Switch? Maybe something like that. I don't know. What do you guys think? Beaver game they showed at the Game Awards. Yeah. I mean, that really obscure ass game that no one could figure out. Why don't we go over here? Now that we got some gameplay going on, we can actually play something in the meantime. Uh, over here. I have the direct over on this screen, off, offside the Game Boy, but I'm I'm still looking at it every now and then just to make sure it hasn't started. I'm keeping my eye on the clock too, so we good. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> so I'm gonna fire up some Seamu. Vulcan X should be good. I want to see what just like Smash Brothers looks like on this game. I know it's like not like the greatest, but it does actually doesn't look too bad. One day I'll get a Switch. Yeah, man. It's a great console. No BS. It really does. Does pretty well. Oh yeah, that's right. Smash Brothers is a little screwy for me. Right, okay. I understand now, I remember. Oh yes, I remember now. But L and R, yeah. Oh, I want to do this, right? 
then L and R. There we go. Hey, what the fudge? How's it going, man? That was for the PS5. I want a new God of War sequel. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see... You know, it's going to be Mark Cerny out on stage, so we all know what happened the last time he went out on stage. PS4 reveal. So, we'll have teases, I think, of future titles. Because I don't think then I don't think we'll hear anything from Sony until the summer. So the gamble. Let me go back to the main screen so you guys can see what's going on. It's like, nope, not going to show you, Santiago. Uh, there we go. Nope, still nothing, huh? Weird. <laughs> there we go. So, no, I am not playing this on the Wii U. I'm actually playing this on my computer via the Simu emulator. It'll probably lag out when I first start, but it's all right. It's the guy with the long hair. Yeah, here we go. We'll give him a uh... player two for him to look like Sephiroth. We'll give each other stock too. Survival. That uh, Xbox Series X, what do you guys think of that? That whole plug and play? You know, proprietary solid state drive that they have going for it's like a memory card from the GameCube days. I still like them. I like, don't believe it. Rumor to be uh, all virtual this year. I think it's cool to have uh, help back. Yeah. Well, they already developed a new engine. Oh, it's gonna lag a bit, guys. That's okay though. So what's like kind of funny about these emulators is that like I'll play a full match here with like corner, and if I had the exact same match, like after this five stock, it'll run completely fine because all the textures will be fully loaded into my PC. The only real reason why you have, you know, struggle on a computer like mine in this game is because the textures aren't fully loaded in, and that's what consoles do is, you know, they pride themselves on speed and accessibility. I'm getting absolutely destroyed right now. Oh, it's like trying to grab. I have the buttons, like, screwed up, that's why. I'm like, why am I trying to grab right now? So, I want to have this, yep, and then left and right. There we go. That makes more sense, I think. There you go. God of War sequel, I mean, uh, that would be kind of cool, though. I wasn't really honestly too, uh, overall too impressed with God of War on PS4, the new one. So if they decided to go back and reinvent that again, I'd be all for it. Oh, you guys can't even see this shit. OBS is ridiculous. I think we're good. I have to actually do this. Random. This is my attempt at playing this game on an Xbox controller. I just set this all up like a few days ago, so. I just wanted to see what the game would kind of look like in full HD, running on something that wasn't the Wii U. 
this game runs pretty good. Um, so I've heard in Mario Kart, uh, Super Mario 3D World, Bayonetta 2, Pikmin. That was a fail. It's like, if you're gonna do like, it's like kind of weird though, like E3, like I don't, if it's gonna be all digital, it's like, well, who the hell cares? You know, the, why wouldn't, why wouldn't like a company like, you know, like why is Microsoft gonna be like, yeah, sure, we'll buy into E3 again. And like, you know, why? Cause they want like all the branding and the lower third artwork and shit. They could just put on their own show. Yeah, this corn's kicking my ass mostly because I'm unfamiliar with how this is supposed to feel on an Xbox controller. The only other game I'd like being shown is the new Shantae game. That'd be cool. You think Way Forward isn't it or Yacht Club games? Is it Way Forward or Yacht Club? I always forget. We did Shantae. What I want to know is, is when when is Way Forward gonna come in and remake uh, DuckTales 2? You know what I'm saying? Man, I don't know if it's like the delay in this game or what, or the fact that I am playing on an Xbox One controller, but this is not. It's also the Wii U version, so I'm like, huh. You know what I could see them showing Doc today? I could see them, like, for real. Like, taking some of the really popular Steam games that a lot of people take for granted that we've had for maybe, like, the last, like, five or, or six years and providing, you know, uh, really awesome-looking ports for the Switch. For something that is uh, better run on, uh, I guess, a, a less sophisticated piece of hardware than a PC. Like, you, you wouldn't consider, like, Gearbox. Gearbox isn't, like, an indie studio, even though that they are technically, like, independent. How did she clip me right through the, uh, bottom of that stage? Jesus. I was just sitting there like, ugh! I got lucky. Ah, oh, Cloud. I'm just getting roasted here. Mostly because I'm kind of distracted. There we go. That would be next level, man. Even though I still, I'm still convinced that Toby, <laughs> Toby is involved with a, a mother, a mother inspired game, so Earthbound. Like I'm still convinced that that. You guys remember that prototype Earthbound game we saw for the uh, GameCube? And there were screenshots of it. And it looked like this like Wooly World like style game. It was like all yarn. I'm totally blowing it. my game you control it plugged into my PC. I also have Rumble on which I never ever play with. And it's Xbox controller rumble so it's like really highly sophisticated rumble and so I'm constantly feeling like there's something just jangling inside of my controller because it's such a light rumble. convinced though that you know it's gonna be like uh, guys at Larian Studio guys who are doing Baldur's Gate 3 
you know, I could see them coming out and being like, yep, Divinity Sin uh, 1 and 2, now on the Nintendo Switch. I'd be like, Yahoo! Sign me up. It's a great game. Plus, that was a Kickstarter game originally, too, and the Switch, you know, wasn't around when that when that first came out, so... That's, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at it like that. Damn, son. Yeah, I'm just getting absolutely destroyed. It's cool, though. Right? Yeah, something's also kind of wrong with like the graphics as you can see like she's in like this permanent like white screen I'm not sure what's going on with Corrin. She looks like she's ascended into heaven or something She's become part of the life force wow! Anyways, let's get out of this thing Oh, yeah back to uh back to over here I mean, this event's cool. I'd prefer to be streaming a real, you know, a real Nintendo Direct, which I'm pretty convinced that Nintendo's just kind of, you know, they don't really care anymore. They don't, they don't really care that they haven't put out anything really substantial or meaty in the last, like, oh, I don't know, you know, 395 days or whatever ridiculous amount, year and a half. I'm convinced that Nintendo, they don't, you know, they have no reason to advertise anything. They don't have anything to show, and that's why we haven't seen shit, because they have nothing to show. You know, you don't just get on stage and do like a little song and dance if you're not doing anything, you know? These guys, you know, their marketing is probably just not, not aligned right now. So, we'll see. We will see. We have four minutes left? Okay. I do sincerely question whether PS5 is really going to be... Yeah, I need Reggie back. Nope, too late. He's already working for someone else now. Too late. He's working for the big GameStop now. They had their chance, they blew it. Switch to the dark side, man. They must have been desperate. You know, you don't just do that. <laughs> you don't just say, yeah, yeah, sure. I'll just uh, board that sinking ship like that. Like, no problem. I'll just, I'll go, I'll go enjoy GameStop. Sure. I don't care what's going to happen. No. You must have gotten a lot of money for that. A lot of, like, how, mu how much money do you think you got for that? As being on, like, the board of directors. That's like... You know, that, and that's not just being like, oh, yeah, you know, CEO. He's, like, above the CEO. So Reggie and whoever else is on that board of directors really is calling the shots for that company. So, and for Reggie, it's like, well, money's already in his pocket. Whether the company fails, it's not like that's going to be pinned on him. If anything, he really is going to try to help him, so. Random. Random. I, I... I give him all the power in the world, you know? I mean, he's he's out of his mind, but yeah. What do you think, Grandpa? Fuck you! Okay. Yeah, Grandpa is not sold.
Uh, but you know, honestly, I think I think GameStop is still going to be dead. Unfortunately, I think they're uh, dead in the water. Yeah, and like they're, you know, I've heard like their sales pitches there and, you know, and things before walking in there and I've heard what the employees get coached and it's just all seems to deceive, to deceive the customer. It's not to really help the customer or provide, you know, a, a good product to the customer. It's how to, hey, how can we do this to deceive you the most? That, and that makes me feel funny because <laughs> I don't like going into a place that I know I'm going to be, try to be scammed, you know, and I know that these people are like taking advantage of you know, at least in America, they're taking advantage of people who don't natively speak English, you know, and they're trying to confuse like these like poor, like, you know, old Hispanic women, you know, who could barely speak English. And I'm like, man, like that just feels so awful. That just feels so bad. I just would never. Oh, shit. Here we go. I miss, I miss Funkoland. I miss Fuckoland too. You know what I'm saying? Here we go! Nice on! Yikes, this is some low resolution BS right here. No, this just this rendered video is super, super duper low resolution. Man, this looks rough. This is like some 3D, like Super Meat Boy, you know, like, all right, hmm. Interesting one to start off Hi with. Hi everyone, and welcome to Indie World, a sneak peek at some exciting indie games coming to the Nintendo Switch system. I'm John Vignacchi. And I'm Sam Robertson. And Ooh. that was the world premiere of Blue Fire from Graffiti Games and Argentina-based Roby Studios. Embark on a journey through a long forgotten land filled with deadly adversaries and collectibles aplenty and face 3D platforming challenges in a strange place called the Void. A dark what? world awaits when Blue Fire launches first on Nintendo Switch as a timed console exclusive this summer. Oh shit, exclusive. Ciao a tutti, sono Fabio Caponi, art director di Napsteam, un piccolo team di solo due persone e sono davvero felice di potervi parlare di Napsteam. Better not be da fan dei grandi action adventure RPG e degli iconici anime giapponesi abbiamo sempre sognato di fare qualcosa che unisse le due cose. Volevamo un gioco che fosse un viaggio in un mondo magico ricco di personaggi fantastici, di dungeon complessi da affrontare, enigmi da risolvere. What the hell was un this film done? Like a handicam? Quindi speriamo davvero che Baldo vi possa appassionare e toccare il cuore come ha fatto con noi. I He's really also facing the wrong way. You sh they it should have had the camera facing the other way. It reminds me of some of my favorite way. classic anime films. Yeah, totally. And on top of that, it's got a rich cast of characters, incredible Looks destinations, like, like, and an Cooney epic storyline like full of intriguing secrets. Exploring this action-adventure RPG's open world, solving its puzzles, I like and this little like three quarters, you know, uh, some serious time perspective folks. kind of thing. So be sure to set some aside when Baldo releases first on Nintendo Switch that as nice a time console for. exclusive this summer. I don't know. Nice shot. I don't know what that one was for either. This is Shelmiston, a small but remarkable island in the North Atlantic with a long, strange history. Oh, um, I'm Morris Lupton. I've lived here all my life. I've been curating the stories of this unique place for years at... Ah, the Shelmiston Museum. Museum. But lately, well, it seems like I can do um, new things. 
I'm, you think he can do new well, things, or you're tripping on deal, LSD? But I should mention at this point, I am dead. So, this may be my inner goth talking, but I'm dying to explore the afterlife. And I'm <laughs> dying to try out those ghostly powers, Sam. X-ray vision, sign me up. Although, from what I hear, Shelmerston may not be long for this world. But unraveling the tiny island's ancient mysteries is going to be what saves it. You know, UK-based developer Hollow Ponds and Richard Hogg, these guys know their way around charming puzzles. It's like, and I can't wait to game. solve them. When I Am Dead launches first on Nintendo Switch as a timed exclusive later this year. Hi everyone, my name is Heather Bellabo, and I'm the Director of Production at TikTok Games. Hi there, I'm Melissa, I'm one of the producers and the marketing lead. We are here today to introduce you to our newest title, Bark. Bark is a 2D side-scrolling co-op space shooter where you play as one of four ferocious animal astronauts trying to liberate the Earth from crazy robots. This is a family-focused game that builds a cooperative spirit while still encouraging competition. We hope you enjoy playing this title as much as we enjoyed making it. In this whimsical side-scrolling shooter from California's TikTok games, team up with your critter companions to defeat enemies, collect coins, it's upgrade just ships, a... and take out the bad guys. Each animal has a distinct play style, and you can combine abilities to mix up the fun. With easy couch co-op, like, this is just this like a party straight game up like vector is a marvelous fit for family on the gaming. Screen. Bark blasts off first as a timed console exclusive on Nintendo Switch in late 2020. Better be like a 99 cent game. Hey everyone, I'm Chris Wilson, creator of Cyanide and Happiness, and joining us today is a hideous mutant freak. Hi Chris, thanks for having me. Now freak, everybody's wondering, what happened to your face? Glad you asked. I, like many of my loved ones, was minding my own business when the apocalypse happened, destroying nearly everything and leaving us all horribly mutated. Well now, that's a heck of a way to start the day. I'll tell you what, nothing wakes you up like discovering you can now breathe through your tear ducts. <laughs> Gosh, well, now that you're so hard to look at, where can the audience see what you've been up to? You can find me in the brand new adventure game, Freak Apocalypse, where you can explore, solve puzzles, and try to survive in this what's left of our terrible the world. And be sure to keep an eye out for me. I'm the one that's not dead. <laughs> that's great. I'll definitely check it out. Now, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. No, you won't. <laughs> Chris? Chris? While we're waiting for Chris, you guys get ready for a world full of weirdness when Cyanide and Happiness Freakpocalypse launches first as a timed console exclusive on Nintendo Switch this summer. Hola a todos, somos Chibi, un estudio español situado en Valencia. Os presentamos nuestro nuevo videojuego. Summer in Mara es una aventura tropical que cuenta la historia de Koa, I'm una like niña que deja I, on para some descubrir of these. los secretos del océano. Hemos creado una aventura sobre el crecimiento y sobre cuidar la naturaleza. En Chivig hacemos juegos de granjas en lugares insólitos. En Summer in Mara tendrás tu propia isla que cuidar y además un barco con el que explorar el océano. Con más de 30 islas que descubrir y una ventana de personajes a los que ayudar, tendrás mucho que hacer. Relájate, disfruta y nos vemos en Mara. It might be tempting to just kick back and catch some rays when you hit the beach in Summer in Mara. But the ocean calls you to fulfill your destiny, and mysteries await. Yeah, like, what's up with that gigantic rock thing Dora the right Explorer, there on your Breath of the Wild Adventure? Make friends, farm, explore, and craft, as Koa's adventure unfolds in a vibrant world with weather events and a day-night cycle. And contrary to its name, you're not going to have to wait until summer to play this game. Because Summer in oh, Mars' really? first you don't port of say. call is Nintendo Switch as a timed console oh exclusive God. this spring. Which means players on Nintendo Switch will be the first to get these timed exclusive free in-game clothes and backpack. Hi, my name is Baltasar Borges from sunglasses. Nimble Giant, a game development studio in Buenos Aires, Argentina. Quantum League is a first-person shooter with a unique time loop mechanic that allows you to team up with your future and past selves in one versus one and two versus two online battles. In this game, causality isn't fixed, and you can change the outcome of a round each time it rewinds. It's like your favorite time travel movie mixed with a highly competitive FPS, 
We sincerely hope you'll enjoy Quantum League. This online FPS is a bit of a brain bender. But once you wrap your head around the nifty time paradox I mechanic, hate the, gun running the possibilities are positively mind-boggling. So check this out. In each consecutive round of a match, you're joined by clones. These are echoes of your past self, and they mimic your previous movements through the arena. Plan what? your actions each round strategically, and you and your clones can faint opponents into some very dangerous situations. This is going to be online. How? Time warps onto Nintendo Switch How? in late 2020. こんにちは。ファイターズのスウェディです。日本の大阪で世界中の皆さんに向けてゲームを開発しています。本日 夜になると人々は犬や猫に変身してしまう。Hope you're ready to use your feline skills and canine prowess to pay off that debt and solve a murder along the way. Jesus. These are no small tasks. But luckily each of your forms has special skills that'll help along the way. And there's this no shit way looks I like it was made to run on like the PlayStation the 3. Transportation is I know it's an indie cheap. game, but enjoy the bizarre charm Ooh, and that of Rainy logo Woods needs to change. The Good Life that launches lady. on Nintendo Switch this year. They need to have something else there. It needs to be Hi, pet related. I'm Sean Murray. And I'm Stephen Burgess. And we're here at Hello Games in the UK. We'd like to show you a little of a game we're working on called The Last Campfire. I'm the designer on The Last Campfire. It's a game about Ember who's become lost and is searching for a way home. The game means a great deal to me and the team, and we were trying to make something about compassion, empathy, and finding hope. Hmm. We really hope you like it. I really hope I do too. interesting hmm. so like puzzle solving highly over stylized What do you guys think? Yay or nay? It's like kind of hard to like get like connected and like like a character when they don't have a lot of uh, like definable like facial features and it's just two like little white dots on it. A yay? like in the middle of Hello Games, known for the vast galactic exploration of No Man's Sky, delivers an altogether huh. more intimate adventure with this new say, game. Experience Game Studio a truly new tale about rekindling hope. So this is what they followed up with with No Man's Nintendo Sky. Switch very interesting. Very summer. offbeat. If you're a fan of games with immersive techno beats and yeah, that game looks like visuals, horrible. Multimedia artist Bayon and Kyoto-based like, games by a long shot. In Pixel Junk Eden 2, stages generate in real time based on your actions as you guide an inquisitive little creature called a Grimp on a journey to save its fellow Grimps and restore their gardens. Like, I know that this obviously took the them time control, and stuff like that, but for real, I do not like the tweening art, like vector experience. art thing. Like this Enjoy shit this here, where it's just a piece of vector art, like flying around the screen, like this is not. When Pixel Junk Eden 2 launches on Nintendo Switch this summer. Every good strategy game has its share of risks and rewards. 
It's like so I see a card game like this. I'm like, why don't you bring Hearthstone? Because the reward just bring Hearthstone. Is that Belgian developer Abercam's card game <laughs> truly comes to life. This is and Hearthstone. And it really puts your strategic skills to the test. Just As you craft bring Hearthstone your decks, to the Switch. But I don't, also the terrain I don't of the know why itself. Blizzard hasn't done that. There are lots of ways to unlock cards in this game. Progress through the sizable solo campaign, for example, or play drafts mode, or even PvP battles. Plus, there are online co-op missions and some puzzles on the side, too. The Nintendo Switch version of Feria comes with four free cosmetic packs available to download for free for a limited time. When the game launches maybe that's why later this spring, there, because maybe and after that, doesn't they'll want be available as in-game purchases. Like, you know, the, the, the it's ability grim. to purchase cards it's and, dark. and such. It's tough to master. But hey, that's all part of the fun. Indeed. Whatever the first game, slaying was, gods is uh, no was, simple task. Cool. Yes, that did look the cool. The bragging rights, legendary. In this brutal boss rush battler, timing and precision this looks pretty cool. paramount. And you guys are going to want to pay attention to your loadout here too, because combat customization and unlockable talents and abilities, they're all key to your survival. Be among the first to take up the challenge when Eldest Souls launches as a timed console exclusive on Nintendo Switch this summer. Hmm. All right, everybody, so we're almost out of time today, but before we go, Jeez, we'd like to share it? a quick peek at a few more indie games that are being worked on by some amazing developers around the world. Okay, better be good. Oh, it still works. Blair Witch? For real? They're making a... They're porting Blair Witch? Or is this a new Blair Witch game? This is a current game. That's already on... That's already on Steam. Sky, I'm not sure about. Looks cool. Sky Rocket. It's like pixelated cuphead, like with boss fights and shit. Trippy ass video games. <laughs> Park Ranger enthusiast. Oh my god, like bird watching? No fucking way. <laughs> what the fuck is this? It's very minimalistic. Dice rolling. Let's go play a board game. This game has like guacamelee characters in it, so I'm curious about that. That looks funny and cool and could be fun with multiplayer. Looks like, you know, kind of like, you know, cooperative, like, zombie ate your neighbors. Well, everybody, it was a pleasure. And it still oh, is. Quality Dark we have Souls, one yeah. One more thing to share. Fire it up. The past has been erased. A new gun man dives. Yet the gungeon remains. Oh, another gungeon game. Okay. Another enter the gungeon. This looks cool. Reminds me of like more like competitive head-to-head -head worms on the guns. Fascinating. Exit the gungeon. Whether you dare to enter the gungeon or not, be prepared to exit. This game picks up right where the last one left off, and developer Dodgeroll has somehow managed to make the arsenal packed extravaganza we know as the Gungeon even more intense. Packing it with hundreds of weapons and items, shifting rooms, and plenty of battle hardened gun dead. Exit the Gungeon launches on Nintendo Switch as a time console exclusive later today. Oh shit! Well, everyone, it was a pleasure. Really? Oh, no and way. It's over. For real this time.
But on behalf of Nintendo, we just want to take a minute to say thank you to our Indie World community and all the developers out there that are just as passionate about indie games as all you fans that play them on Nintendo Switch. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Interesting. For more of the latest news from the Indie World Does that community, you up, Genesis? be sure to follow Nintendo of America's just launched official Indie World Twitter account. Oh. At Indie World NA. Until next time, happy gaming. See ya. Hmm. Well, that was fucking cool. I can't say I, I'm disappointed by, well, no, it was like, kind of like, yeah. Hmm. Very cool. Moving out. Yeah, it does, right? Looks like chaotic multiplayer. Looks very cool. Looks pretty cool. I would say out of all that thing, there was probably like three or four. Three or four. I would say there's like probably three or four games that I'm super, super excited about. I'm getting Eggs of the Gungeon. It looks pretty cool, honestly. That's gonna be pretty dope. <laughs> very, very interesting. Am I too late? Yes, you just missed it. It's all good though. We're gonna be doing this all like tomorrow. And it's gonna be earlier too. I'll start going live around 11.30 a.m. Eastern for the PlayStation 5 reveal. That's gonna be a big deal. That's gonna be a big deal. I'm gonna be a little bit more hyped up for that. I'll, I'll have some more coffee in me by that point. Because this was like, uh, like uh, I mean, it was cool, but three or four big ones, you know, Exit the Gungeon seems uh, really cool. And it's a Switch exclusive. That seems pretty cool too. I'll probably end up going to pick that up. Well, probably after I end this stream. But uh, yeah, quick stream. Didn't expect that it was gonna go super long. But I'll be back tomorrow at 11.30 a.m. Eastern for the PlayStation 5 reveal, which is gonna be really cool. Mark Cerny, he'll he'll go into everything. He'll talk about the graphics card, the solid state drive, the you know, the operating system. He's gonna talk about everything. He's gonna spill the beans tomorrow. So it'll be good. Don't worry about it, Reamu. Thank you again for tuning in, everyone. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'll try to go live a little bit earlier just so I can hang out and chat and chit chat. Hey, yep, take it easy, man, all right? So long, troops. I'll see you tomorrow. What are you still doing here? Go watch one of these guys. Any one of these idiots over here, just go watch them. Just don't stand here and stare at a blank screen. Come on!